So I just saw Netflix's newest film, Damsel. And something very strange occurred to me that I do not think anybody is talking about. It is a weird, very specific niche trend that Netflix has been doing in its last couple of movies. And by last couple of movies, I do just mean the last two movies it's released, at least the ones that I'm aware about. Any other Netflix films that have been released in the last eight days that aren't a part of this, ignore them. I am specifically talking about the last two films that have come out on the last two Fridays that I consider to be spiritual sequels or maybe the same film, but not really. Just like weirdly specific things that the both films do like that feel the same. And I can hear you say, what? Shut up, what? Which films? What are you talking about? Let me explain. So Netflix two Fridays ago released Spaceman and this week released Damsel. Both films are genre films in which it stars one main character. One main character played by a famous actor. That famous actor is stuck in a location, almost like a bottle episode, but not fully. It's not always in that location, but it is mostly in this one location in which they are trapped alone in a genre piece, talking with a giant fantastical creature. In Spaceman, we had Adam Sandler in space, in a spaceship, talking with a giant spider. This time, it's Millie Bobby Brown hanging out with a dragon, a talking dragon. It's like they're the same film. You know what? Now I say it out loud. The similarities are, I don't feel like there is concrete as in my mind. When I watch it, I'm like, it's the same as Spaceman, but a different movie with different things in it. It really is just that there are two giant, big sized fantastical creatures that speak. And when you scrape that away, they're essentially entirely different films with different plots. And to be fair, Damsel has quite a lot of actors in the first and third acts. It's really just that second act in which she's alone. Whereas Adam Sandler, he's alone for the whole time. And I guess in tone, they're very different. Spaceman is very sad and boring. And Damsel is just really boring, but kind of fun, but mostly boring. That second act did not work for me. In conclusion, I, <laughs> I changed my mind. They aren't actually similar. And in a lot of ways, I consider Damsel to be a spiritual sequel to Spaceman. But it's not really. The, the more I think about it, and as soon as I like voice this opinion, and I could like hear it, like bouncing around in my room, I realize, no, that's, that's dumb. And you're grasping at straws. Straws that aren't even there. So just grasping? I can't believe I waited till Friday pass to find out what the third film in this trilogy of main actors isolated in a situation with a giant fantastical fantasy creature that talks. I, I was just like waiting. I'm like, oh my God, they didn't tell you on that this is like a trilogy? Spaceman, damsel, and then a third untitled film. I was so excited. I had my hopes on a pirate genre film starring Daniel Day Lewis and he's isolated on a ship. And what's the fantastical magical creature that speaks you ask? It's a merman, of course. But twist, Daniel Day Lewis also plays the merman. Daniel Day-Lewis as the Merman, starring slash versus Daniel Day-Lewis as the pirate. Daniel Day-Lewis, dual roles. That's how you get him out of retirement. If he, if he's retired, is he retired? If he's not retired, retire him, then bring him back out of retirement. Daniel Day-Lewis is the Seaman. Thought I was like this Sherlock Holmes detective Batman thing, like uncovering the secrets of Netflix's secret trilogy. But in hindsight, this is not a Deep Impact slash Armageddon situation, even though I didn't think it was that originally. I'm trying to dip myself out of this hole of grief as I've realized that I thought I had something that no one's talking about. And now I realize why no one was talking about it. Cause, it, cause it's nothing. This is my Napoleon review that I didn't release all over again. I, like I finished the movie and I'm like, oh my God, this Napoleon film is like two thirds great, but that one third that's really bad that I hated kind of ruins the whole thing. This reminds me so much like the ice cream, Napoleon, the Napoleon ice cream in which there are three flavors, strawberry, vanilla, chocolate. And one of those flavors always ruins the other two cause you kind of expected to eat it. So that one third ruins the other two thirds and I was like I have the best joke I can't believe no one's talking about the fact that Napoleon the film about Napoleon the character is exactly the same experience as the ice cream Napoleon and then I got home and I'm like it's it's Neapolitan it's Neapolitan not Napoleon and I was so sad because I was like, I have struck gold. I was like at the gold digging place in Ballarat. I was like, Eureka! It's a local reference and I'm holding the gold. I'm like, I'm a successful gold digger. But then I look down and I guess I was like hallucinating like an oasis in the desert and it's just like a pile of shit in my hands. And I'm like, <laughs> oh.